Hello everyone and welcome to Phoenix Gaming. Today we are covering the 2023 Terraforming Mars Ring Final, which you can see that I am present for in the bottom right corner here. You can see my concerned face at the beginning because the beginning of this game does not go in the way that I really hope that it does for most of these games, but we'll get into that in a minute. In seat one, we've got Jacopo, who is presented here. Uh, I, I guess he got married at WSBG or him and his wife got married in Vegas and then came to WSBG, something like that. Um, but he also manages to win his way into the Terraforming Far Mars final. Levi, who was the ring winner from 2022 in seat two. And then we have, uh, I believe, Nicholas. I'm covering his name. Nicholas in seat, uh, seat four there. I'm covering his name because I'm trying to make my screen wide enough to cover the fine gentleman underneath me. We have very handsome Michel and also normal handsome Chris George uh, underneath if you want to watch their commentary of the game. Uh, but of course here you get a little bit of extra insight uh, for what I was thinking about this game. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. Um, just so you know, I am playing this video at plus 33% speed uh, because it is a long two hours and 40 minutes. And we're going to see Jacopo kicking off here with Credit Core, which I think is absolutely one of the best um, corporations that you can play in the game. They start with a ton of cash. They get rebates every time they spend a whole bunch of cash, so you can buy big expensive things. Um, that includes your standard projects like your greeneries and your cities. And my preferred strategy on uh, the Tharsis map Actually, I think everyone's preferred strategy on the Tharsis map is what's known as the ground game. Um, and essentially just putting as many of those cities and greeneries down as possible. The two milestones that reward you those five points for it are just very good. There's a landlord award um, that just kind of accelerates that. So um, if you let a single player get both of those milestones, it is basically game over in a uh, four player game. And we've got Levi here with Ecoline doing exactly that plan that I was just talking about. Ecoline being very, very good at dropping greeneries into play. Greeneries are absolutely amazing on the Tharsis map. Every greenery you play is basically two points, one for the oxygen and then one for the greenery itself. And then if you play it next to cities, they can be worth three points. So they just are very, very, very efficient at point scoring, um, though they are a little bit susceptible to comets and other things like that. I'm playing Inventrix, which is a faction that I don't love, but we'll get into why I'm playing Inventrix in a second. You do get to draw three extra cards off the top. Um, I think they're cheating the... The um, conditions power is okay in some instances, but usually doesn't come into play except for very few specific cards. And then we've got Nicholas here playing Robinson Industries, which I think is an absolutely awful faction. Um, I think in a very long game, maybe a two or three player game, the ability to up, you know, all your different kind of production systems is good for the you know low, low price of four dollars. But I think generally with preludes on this map, uh, you're going to be going as fast as possible. Um, Jacopo has a very, um, engine focused start with his, uh, prelude cards and Levi has just an absolutely sick start here. He's playing exactly the game plan I like most by dropping, um, some extra lakes on the board, getting some greeneries. He gets another greenery with an experimental, uh, sorry, getting some plants. And then he drops a greenery with experimental forest, drawing himself as Ecoline into even more plant cards. This is a nutty, nutty start for Ecoline. Um, just extra money, extra plants. You can see he's got so many plants there. He's going to be playing a, a greenery on his first turn. And before we even get to the second action of the game, um, Levi is going to have two greenery cards in play. Protected Valley is only a so-so card for Eco Line. Other people get to take more advantage of it, you know, using the the um, the uh, steel as, as discounts there. And that was, uh, well, I didn't quite see. They, they grabbed it quickly and I, I tried to stop them as well. Um, but I think that's kind of one of the more middling plant cards, certainly not one of the most exciting ones. So not insane draws for him um, off the top there. Um, here's why I keep Inventrix. I keep all 10 starting cards in my hand plus three. Partway through this tournament, I played with a, who's a man who's now a good friend of mine, and he told me about the strategy that he plays sometimes where he goes for 16 cards at the beginning of the game. I did not like any particular game plan that I had, so what I decided to do was draft a bunch of mediocre cards and uh, hope to make Earth Catapult things happen. And I play a lake here to draw two cards and Unmi Contractors to draw a third card, meaning I have 16 cards in my hand to start off this game and basically absolutely no cash on hand. Um, fortunately, Unmi Contractors is giving me a couple uh, victory points with the terraforming 
um, and and that will kind of set me up a little bit. Nicholas here leans full into Robinson by going with preludes that are um, infrastructure-based. I normally don't love infrastructure-based as much as point scoring, as I've kind of been rambling about with Levi's and uh, uh, with Levi's start here. But I think in Robinson's case, or Nicholas's case, playing Robinson, um, I actually really do like his decision to lean a little bit more into the production side. Um, you know, he's hoping that the game will go a little bit longer so that he can take advantage of that. And um, interestingly enough, Jacopo like kind of leads off by. Uh, basically playing some steel mining industries, right? He is also going that very infrastructure build, um, which I don't commonly see, I think, or it's not commonly how I play Credit Core uh, because I like using sort of those those default standard actions if I don't like the cards that I'm drawing. Um, but Jacopo has bigger, longer game term um, design plans. And this is actually, I think, the only thing that is keeping Levi from being in the absolute driver's seat is that both Jacopo... Nicholas and myself have indicated here we're looking for a little bit of a longer game, right? Um, I've kept 16 cards in hand. Nicholas is going infrastructure. Jacopo is going infrastructure. So we don't want the game to end quickly, but we also can't allow Levi to just grab all of the early milestones. We know for a fact he's going to get Gardner here, and there's really nothing we can do about that. But anything else we can do to slow him down is important because he is definitely the point leader right from the beginning of the game. Um... Levi, I think, actually, yeah, he just started up doing exactly what we said. He he dropped some plants to make sure that his greenery could go into play here. Um, here I am counting out the fact that I do indeed have 16 cards. And I just kick off by spending all my money so that I can claim that planner and start playing cards out, not being stuck in Concerna as my very first action of the game. Pretty ridiculous start. I actually put myself into the point lead by doing this. Um but I have very limited infrastructure going forward, so it's a bit of a gambit, and we'll see how that pays off for us. Nicholas then plays uh, Inventor's Guild, which is a card that I honestly don't know how to evaluate very well. I see some people say it's very good, some people say it's not that great. Seeing cards in this game is amazing, and it's a little bit of a cheaper way to see more cards in the game, but it is very luck-dependent. If you're unable to draw nice cards off the top of the deck or mediocre cards that you have to pay $3 to buy every time, it can be really hard to evaluate whether you want to keep drawing into those cards cards or not so um it's a good card for what nicholas is going for which is like a, a nice longer game plan but it is definitely an expensive way to to start the game off here um i kind of missed what Jacopo did on his turn i think he played an event of some sort but we haven't seen the heat go up so i don't think it's a big deal and then levi here plays methane from titan which he can get away normally has a two percent oxygen requirement but he played out the two uh, plants that he needs to. So a turn one methane from Titan gives him two heat production, two plant production, um, and two points. The two points in the Jovian tag are not as sexy for him probably as, as they would be for our other players and in instances, but the two plant production and the two heat production just leans him further into that. I am going to be scoring points. I'm going to be pushing for the end of the game. I think that's one of the best methane from Titans I've, I've really ever seen. Getting it down on turn one just is going to generate so, so much by the end of the game. If this game ends on turn, like let's say eight for instance it will have generated 16 plants um so you know it's a two point card plus those 16 plants are two more greeneries which we just said are at least two points each so another four points there um plus 16 heat so another you know one or two off of the heat so that card that he played is you know worth upwards of like six seven eight points depending on how things work I do something much goofier here, and I use my last $4 to play Tardigrades, a pretty awful card um, that I only kept because I'm trying to go for this 16. I believe it is one of the cards that I kept. Um, but I figure if I play it on turn one, it's one of the very few things that I can afford. If the game goes for eight turns, then it's going to score two points. And if it goes for not eight turns and I play it on a later turn, it's only going to score one point. So I figure dropping it out on the first turn is pretty much the ideal choice for me if I'm going to play this card at all. Um, and then Nicholas says, all right, I also have some uh, microbes, but his microbes are going to be more money generating microbes, but just for playing plant cards. I forget the name of that card, but that's, that is what that card does. A research coordination here is an interesting choice for him. It's a cheap card that doesn't do a whole lot, but it gives him prerequisites for playing other cards. So we'll have to pay attention to what he's playing in the future to see how that goes. And it looks like one of those prerequisites that he's using there um, is to play fusion power off the beginning. So he's got an absolutely insane five energy production at the end of the first round, which is not too exciting unless he comes out next turn with one of those pay for 
um, energy to create oxygen, which actually creates a nice pressure on Levi, who wants to make oxygen off of plants. So um, it chokes out the effic uh, efficacy of the greeneries if he is able to play one of those kind of like steel processor blue cards in the next turn. So I do hope that that's what we're going to see from Nicholas. Um, obviously, I'm extremely biased and that I'm hoping that I will win this game. Uh, so all of those things are going to be said from the perspective of <laughs> what I'm hoping for in this instance. Whew. 33% was maybe aggressive. We're in a production right now. Maybe I should pause while we're doing production. It's not interesting for you guys to see. So I'll see you in just a second. All right. Here we are having drafted and produced. Um, I'm just having this part out so that we can see essentially how many cards folks are, are drafting. You can see Leva's got about four cards in his hand. Looks like he's keeping one. Um... And everyone's kind of thinking about that. By the way, apologize in advance, but I've been sick this week, so I'm, I'm rocking a cough drop right now. Otherwise, I'm going to absolutely run out of air. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, looks like Levi keeps a handful of cards here, actually. Not just the one, but um, I think it was a couple. I keep just the one. I've already got plenty of cards that I need to play. It's plenty of problem for me already. I need cash. Looks like Nicholas does maybe a two split. And Jakobo pretty similar, I think, with a two split here. It's generally more normal, I think, for folks to be buying cards earlier in the game. They, you know, if it's a really good late game card, you got to decide if you want to pay to play it or not. And if it's a construction, you know, early card, kind of a system, uh, you know, resource producing card, obviously playing it earlier matters. Levi here is just going to make sure that he's not concerned about getting hit by any meteors as he drops his very early third greenery into play, scoring some more additional points. He's now in a position where he can claim the milestone, but he really is not at too much of a threat for not getting it. So um, if he has counted his money out and he sees that, okay, I've got my $27 here and I need to use it for other things, he may not decide to claim the milestone just yet. I'll get out in early pets before people start dropping cities on the board, and I'm really hoping that... Uh, Jacopo ideally is going to be in a position to contest Levi for getting cities because um, I think if, if Levi gets both the mayor and the gardener we're going to be in big 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 trouble here Nicholas is going to whiff with the inventors guild here and we see some flooding from Jacopo um, basically dropping out a lake here uh, probably going to steal some yeah steal some money from Levi here slow him down a little bit um, it's point neutral for Jacopo, but it gives him some income. Um, it's not very expensive, slows down um, another player. So it's not the most exciting of plays, but it definitely does some work. And then is that a capital city? This is going to make it so that he's turning that energy that he's... Um, the energy production that he got from the beginning of the game and turning that into a big, big, big bump in terms of cash because it's plus five cash per turn. He's going to get $6 rebated on that capital right now. So I think that he was planning that capital city card right from the beginning of the game. Also, since he's playing credit core, credit core, another $4 back from that's a pretty sweet capital that comes out early. Thanks to Levi setting up those lakes in the middle there. Another reason why the flooding worked out really beneficially for Jacopo, knowing that he was going to cash in on that lake immediately. <laughs> Levi here is back in mass, so it might be that he was, you know, kind of debating what he was going to do with all that money. Um, but looks like he's going to play out his protected valley. This does give him two income every turn, <clears throat> and he can kind of keep getting those victory points. Uh, it's really three income because of the greenery here. And he's going to drop it right next to Noctis City and get $2 here. To me, this says that Levi has Noctis City in hand right now. The fact that he's making that choice to go over there, which if that's the case, is a very sick draw for um, Ecoline. Because Ecoline often has this difficulty of I place greeneries and then other people play cities to take advantage of where my greeneries have been placed. Um, by having Noctis City, he's got a position locked on the board that he can just drop greeneries around. So really, really unfortunate to see that. Tardigrades, hooray. And looks like Nicholas triggers his uh, his little biome, guys. Jacopo here is going to drop some space shuttles. So he's planning on playing a bunch of space cards, titanium-based cards over the course of the game. You know, that card is a victory point, and it basically rebates two bucks every time you play a space card. So it's a 
to, you know, it's a completely fine, like, value proposition card. This looks like an indentured worker. It's just a negative victory point, but $8 for Levi. So um, he kept that card. So basically decided he wanted to get something out quickly. And it looks like he's going to do, um, is that regolith eaters? They're basically guys that will, bacteria that turns into um, uh, oxygen producing guys. It's a curious choice, I think, because he's now kind of competing with himself in terms of who gets the oxygen, but it does make it so that the game is going to push closer and closer to the end. I don't I don't personally think that's the best play. I don't know that I agree with it. So I, I definitely would be curious to hear in the comments what folks think, or Levi, if you're watching this, you know, weigh in on, on the sense of, is it just worth rushing the end of the game enough um, and the points that those regular eaters will make before then that uh, you're not worried about what it's gonna do for creating that tension of, I'm already the person that creates oxygen in this game. Um, this is a cheap little drop from me, a little bit of income uh, to go get some rewards somewhere on the board, way to just kind of continue playing cards out of my hand here. <laughs> At this point, I am holding Earth Catapult in hand, and I'm deciding on every card, is it worth it to play this card now, or am I waiting for the Earth Catapult later? I decide that I want to play out the pets early so I don't miss out on any cities, trying to get those earlier victory points. And then with this, it's basically either I get the extra $1 income or I get a $2 rebate. And I don't want the oxygen to get too high that I can't play this card anymore. Plus, it gives me some items right now of my first choice. It's not the most ideal situation, um, but it is the situation that we find ourselves in when we keep a bunch of mediocre cards in our hand at the beginning. A robotic workforce here for Nicholas is going to make him the absolute master of producing energy. It looks like he's played a quantum extractor, even though he's just doing it with normal energy producing things. And Robinson here will drop him up. Uh, so he's now making steel and titanium, um, which is what he did last turn with Robinson, which I think is generally the the correct starting sequence in terms of, of creating resources there. And the second round goes much faster as everybody's kind of broke. They only have their income from the first turn. Pretty quick around what everybody does. Jacobo just with the capital city. Levi with those pile of greeneries, uh, me with a couple of middling cards, and Nicholas building up that infrastructure here. I think Levi and Nicholas probably have overall the most exciting turns this round. That's kind of the most sort of like played out value generated for them. But Jacobo has increased his income significantly, which I think is, is pretty beneficial. Um, and I'm obviously off to a pretty slow start here. Um, after coming off of uh, paying too much money to keep all those cards in my hand. So we'll see how that goes, and I will see you after they draft the next cards. A little bit of a longer draft this time. We see me keeping one card. Again, te not terribly surprising, given that I've kept so many cards, I'd have to be really impressed by something to want to keep it. Um, maybe Nicholas already bought his cards as I was moving ahead, because he looks like he's got them all together. But I do think he picked up two this round. Looks like we're going to get two pickup from Levi. Looks like maybe also two from Jacopo. Or maybe Nicholas is still debating what he wants to keep here. Well, he's put them all in his hand there, so. Ooh, we see a terraforming Ganymede there from Nicholas. So he's hoping to go for a Jovian. Always a good card to speculate on. Just uh, just a couple Jovian tags makes Terraforming Ganymede suddenly very, very good. Ooh, looks like Jacobo keeps a full set of four. You'll sometimes see that from people who are going more infrastructure. Just uh, there's a lot more cards they can make use of, whereas someone in, you know, say Levi's position is really a little bit more narrow focused, narrowly focused in their game plan. Um, same with me, right? Like Levi and my game plan is extremely different in that I already have a lot set up. So I need to make sure I play those cards out before the end of the game. Um, whereas Levi is a lot more focused on I'm drilling in on these certain points. So it's a different kind of focus, but him and I are both likely to be keeping fewer cards than other players for that reason throughout the course of the game. And I'll lead us off here. This is an Earth Catapult, maybe. I sold a card for a dollar, probably one of the cards I drew off of Ventrix earlier on that I was not too excited about. And instead of actually playing out the um, 
the uh, Earth Catapult, I decide I'm gonna go ahead and just standard project out a city. I don't have other city cards in my hand. There's two free victory points to grab here as well as a $2 rebate um, from those greeneries. It's also entirely possible that Levi is gonna continue playing greeneries around. I think that that Noctis City one is likely on the northern side at some point gonna be touched as well. So it might end up being worth three points for me. And uh, it's not like I would save any money off of the Earth Catapult there. So I basically decide I'm just going to cash out early. And it's because I don't have any exciting infrastructure cards in my hand, frankly. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I have that's just, like, very middle game. You'll see later. Um, I don't think this is a terribly powerful position for me to be in, but it is the position that I'm in. Didn't quite see if Nicholas hit with his Inventor's Guild this time, but my memory is no. I feel like he had a lot of whiffs with his Inventor's Guild along the way. Jacopo did something, but I missed what it was. Must have been an event of some sort. I think it might have been an event. I think he might have played a meteor because we've got some bumps up on heat. Uh, or like an asteroid or something, and it looks like Levi's missing a couple plants as well. So um, I think what happened is he, pl he played some kind of asteroid to hit Levi. Levi plays a uh, Jupiter colonizer camp here. Uh, that's a great card. It's just two victory points for a very low cost. The problem is that you have to play early in the game. Levi is pretty focused on trying to get the game to the end, and so he's, he's happy to grab those very efficient points earlier on. I think that's a a really good keep and also he's kind of the one in charge of the oxygen um, we didn't see nicholas play out one of those steel processor cards that take advantage of all of his energy so um that's that's uh something that gives levi a little bit more wiggle room there levi says all right i'm not going to push it anymore i will go ahead and just claim the gardener before some weird shenanigans happens i'll do my tardigrade and I'm prematurely passed so I can hit the restroom and everyone else can play a turn. So this is all going to be as new to me as it is to you. We see a business network from Nicholas, which is going to hurt his income and give him even more Inventor's Guild random drawing thing. He's just going for a full sort of drawing infrastructure, but not getting what he wants off the top of the deck, unfortunately. Here we see an advanced alloys for Jacopo, and now we finally understand why he's been going for this infrastructure start collecting all this extra steel, collecting all this extra um, uh, titanium. Um, it is because he is going to turn those into a pile of points afterwards. He's going to play Medical Lab here, uh, which will give him a couple extra income production. Jacopo really valuing that income production, which makes sense. Not only does it allow you to play more of the cards that he's clearly planning on playing with his big keeps here, but also Banker is a pretty relevant award that shows up on this map a lot of times. We don't see a Tharsis in play here, so Banker is, um, it's a scary card to, or scary award to fund because there's a lot of cards that can just give you a ton of income sort of out of nowhere, but, you know, in the lead that he has right now in his fundamental uh, income, it might just be that Jacopo is going to be the one who who is most easily able to take advantage of that award no matter what. Looks like we get a couple pretty quick passes around the table as uh, Jacopo spent his money mostly buying cards and Levi spent his money, um, you know, funding the things that he did, uh, the Jupiter camp and, uh, uh, you know, funding the, the gardener there. So we get another pretty fast round um, as, as players wrap up here. Not a ton of plays from Nicholas either. He's sitting on $13, a little bit unfortunate that he doesn't have a card to play out there to kind of keep developing, but he does use Robinson to get himself some plant production. So he's got everything but heat now. Um, ideally for him, he'd have some card that would actually generate some heat production for him on the next turn so that he could use Robinson to bump like his titanium again. That would probably be a more um, powerful use for him. I'll see you after the next draft. All right, so we've finished drafting here, and uh, Nicholas, not too happy. I think he keeps absolutely nothing from his draft, which is a little bit of a bummer. Looks like Jacobo here is maybe a little bit happier as he keeps, it looks like, three of the cards. I think I only saw one go in the trash there. Levi is still debating his options. Yeah, he's still looking at the four cards, seeing what he can afford, what he can't afford. We see him messing around with the uh, 
something that requires a bunch of science tags I'm completely forgetting the name of. And it looks like he decides to keep absolutely nothing. So I think what that means is that Levi's got a specific set of cards he wants to play in his hand. And he's making probably a very disciplined choice to not keep something that he's a little bit interested in. We see me also debating uh, for quite a long time here. I think there's some cards in this hand. I don't remember exactly what they are that are appealing or exciting to me. Um, but... I am still concerned about being able to play the cards that I have before the end of the game. So we see an investment loan there, which is nice and helpful Like later in the game. We also see a viral enhancers, which is just generally a good card if I have you know other tags to support making use of that. The problem is that I really did want to play Earth Catapult this turn. So I make a, again, kind of more limited choice. I only keep the one. It looks like I think I kept the investment loan just knowing that I would need the money in the long run and paying a couple bucks now is worth it in the long run for me. Nicholas kicks us off with, uh, looks like maybe a Robinson trigger. And some way, ah, he generated heat by dropping a plain asteroid in play. And then, um generated uh robinson to to make a steal that's a very efficient use i really like to see that um Jacobo here has got an asteroid as well as he's going to increase the heat he's a little bit bummed probably to have seen nicholas take advantage of the heat production benefit and he's going to smack levi which is the appropriate choice as i think the pretty clear winner or leader at this point in time um just in terms of of infrastructure and victory points <clears throat> Well, infrastructure, I guess, Jacopo has probably got the most exciting infrastructure so far. Um, but he's, he's I think, notably behind in points compared to, to Levi. Also, Jacopo is not going to hit himself anyway. Here we see a Decomposers from Levi, which he must have drawn recently because I think, uh, well, I guess he that's not necessarily the case. But he's played a couple tags that match with it. And then this is a... Um, a really nice card for him. Again, just taking advantage of all those animal and green tags. Every time he does, he's going to be able to play more animals on, I forget what this is called, protected territory or something like that. Um, but essentially just taking advantage of all these tags. And so now he has a green tag infrastructure on top of the fact that he's got the plant production. So every time we're passing him green cards, it's, it's a threat. So Jacopo and I really need to be paying attention to that during the drafting process. And here we see finally the earth catapult coming down to discount all the rest of the crap that I have in my hand that needs to get played out. Hopefully indicating that this has been my plan for a while, even though it took until turn four to drop earth catapult, which doesn't seem great. Here I drop a sabotage. And Jacobo was scaring me at this point in time, so I hit his Titanium um, because it's the most kind of value that could be hit out there. I do actually wonder in retrospect if what I should have done was sabotage Levi for $7. Now, I want to be very clear. I will never, ever, ever draft sabotage at the beginning of the game. I don't think it's worth $3 to gamble on what opponent I'm supposed to hit. I don't like figuring it out. In retrospect, it's not even clear that I should have been hitting Jacobo over Levi at this point in time, but Credit Core is just always a threat. And it seemed like um, it was the most efficient use for it. But I drew it off of the Inventrix thing or the Unmi thing at the beginning of the game. So when you're playing it for free, you might as well. And Sabotage is just so much more powerful early in the game than it is later. Um, again, going back to that decision, obviously, in retrospect, I should hit the person that's going to win this game, which doesn't end up being Jacopo. Spoilers a little bit. Um, but who's to say what he would have done with 12 extra dollars? I don't think quite enough. So it was probably a mistake. Um, but at the time, I did feel threatened by what he had going on. He'd been buying a lot of cards. It seemed like he had a really good game plan. Here we get exciting Tardigrade. You see how much I love doing that. Some card draws for Nicholas. Actually a tough decision for him. You, we've seen him pitching a lot of ones earlier, but... It's not one where he's immediately choosing. So we see him going back to his hand to see, like, can I actually afford um, these cards for the rest of the turn if I do spend the $3 to buy this card? So it's a card that's exciting enough, but not obvious, that he has to go and debate whether he wants to make the sacrifice of buying this card or if it is a sacrifice to buy this card over doing something else. And he says, I'm going for it. A tech demonstration from Jacopo here will give him even more cards off the top of the deck. A little bit discounted thanks to the fact that he's got that space station there. 
and he rebates it back. I think he has Earth Office out there, so all of his events are $3 back. That was another reason that I hit him with the Sabotage, by the way. It's just even more events that he's playing. He's got a nice little space combo going on over there. Oh, I said it was 12. It's actually 15 for the Titanium because of the, the advanced alloys. Yeah, it's just too threatening. Levi here says, all right, I'll drop some early cash. I will go ahead and fund Landlord. Doesn't seem like you guys are a real threat to me. I am miles ahead of you at this point in time. Um, at five to the other players one and he's going to just continue producing plants as the game goes on pretty safe bet for him but it does mean that the rest of us are saying to ourselves well what does it cost to get second place the two victory points we'll see an industrial microbes here from Jacopo that's a card I don't love playing on turn four of the game um, but it's uh, certainly you know better than playing it even later and if he needs the energy it's a it's a good way to use energy we also know that the steel is even more efficient for him um than than normal but yeah ideally you want to play be playing that card a little bit earlier um in the game because like i said i think this game is going to end around round eight maybe nine We see Levi here counting out his cash, and we see that indeed, had I hit him with the sabotage, he would not be able to drop out this lake right here, but he just plays basically straight up for a nice, normal, fundamental lake to score some points, continues pushing the end of the game. The fact that he's pushing the lakes this aggressively <coughs> does suggest that he maybe has an algae or kelp farming in his hand. In fact, I actually passed him the kelp farming at the beginning of the game, so I'm quite confident that he has kelp farming. Um, I think I took Earth Catapult over it. It was like the, the first pick was Earth Catapult, second pick was Kelp Farming or something like that. And I actually debated it for a while whether I wanted to go into the Kelp Farming plan or whether I wanted to do the crazy Inventrix draw a ton of cards plan. And that was the that was the kind of deciding factor. It was like the second hand because you draft five and then draft five. So yeah, I know for a fact that Levi is holding on to a. Uh, a kelp farming here. The other thing that this does for him is it gives him the plants so that he can uh, drop out that greenery right there. Just an efficient way to prevent himself from getting slammed again by uh, Jacopo's impending comments, which seem to be a, a kind of common system so far in the game. Looks like I'm done for the round. <laughs> And what is this? Is this a research outpost? I think it's a research outpost. It's a nice little card. Discount on all the cards that Nicholas is going to be playing over the course of the game. So he's pretty happy with that. Um, this research outpost doesn't have a ton of places left to drop. Actually, it could go to the west of Noctis City. I think directly west of Noctis City is where I would plan to drop this um, in default here. And exactly, Nicholas does that, gets those greeneries back. Now, if Levi's playing around Nocta City, he's going to get some points rebated for it. There's also just a lot of good rewards around it, as Nicholas himself will be playing greeneries over the course of the game. Someone's saying something to us, and we're very amused, but I do not remember what it is or what it's about. Looks like it's Jonathan, the uh, kind of head honcho in a lot of ways. The rounds here obviously getting longer at this stage as everybody has more money available on them. Is that me setting an alarm for them? Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's coming by telling us what time in the morning. So that's me setting an alarm so I make sure that I arrive in time. <laughs> that's what that conversation was. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, missed what Jacopo did, so I'm going to assume that he actually passed at his little pass button there yeah he passed and i passed and levi passed so we're just down to nicholas doing things which is going to be a common theme throughout the course of this game he's got the most kind of actions he's got some cheap actions um he plays out some mind stuff and we say play out my friend do as you please um saw a couple cards that he had in his hand there like satellites sort of later game for um space infrastructure uh for money it's not the most exciting but does it does a thing um terraforming ganymede which we'd seen already and we're gonna produce and i'll see you after the next draft 
All right, we're just finishing the draft here, but let's do a little state of affairs at the beginning of turn five. Everyone's gone first one time. So Levi and I are both holding on to a milestone. Levi's also done an award. Levi is uh, ahead in victory points at 28. Looks like Jacopo and I are maybe tied at 24. Can't quite see. And uh, Nicholas is down at 21 there. Um, in terms of like cards in play, infrastructure, we see that like Jacopo and Nicholas have played the most, although um, Levi not too, too far behind them. Um, and I've certainly played the least to date uh, and sort of have the least infrastructure going on. I've got the least sort of production. Um, and then, of course, we see Nicholas and Jacopo with the most production, and Levi kind of with a very laser focused production um, as a system there. So, um, as I've been saying and beating the same drum all game, I do think that Levi is ahead at this stage in time. Um, but what Jacopo and Nicholas are able to do is interesting. Um, you know, we'll have to see. And then I obviously have a gazillion cards in my hand um, that are now discounted by two thanks to Earth Catapult goodness. Looks like I missed how many cards everybody was drafting while uh, I was talking there. Um, but we'll start off with Jacopo dropping a Cupola City, uh, making sure that he is able to play this before the oxygen gets too high um, and grab the three victory points that are available uh, over in the side there that, that uh, Levi has kindly set up for him, which, you know, Levi is more focused on getting his own points rather than blocking other people um, from doing that. So he's playing a maximum efficiency there. Um, as I get just a smidge more pets. And now we see that there's essentially a 1-1-1, one, 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 uh, or actually Jacobo has his second city here, uh, which is a really, really significant um, benchmark in the race for mayor. Uh, I think it's unlikely that Nicholas or I are going to be able to contest it, but being able to get it would be pretty exciting for either of us. Levi here has nice timing with uh, essentially a heat conversion that's going to allow him to bump up his heat production. And he'll do some regular things as well. Am I getting grayer? I feel like I'm getting grayer when I look at myself on the screen here. <laughs> it could just be the cameras. We'll blame it on the iPhone. Looks like I did something and then we passed on to Nicholas, but I have absolutely no idea what I did because I've got nothing. Ta oh, no. We're still buying cards is what it looks like maybe. Is it? What am I missing? No, Nicholas did a... I must have done something. Nicholas did an Inventor's Guild thing. And we have a monster um, trip to Earth or convoy from Earth uh, play here by Jacopo. Um, that's kind of an early uh, convoy from Earth. I wonder... I think he's doing it in part to get the, the greens for the greenery um, so that he can play that out. Um, he also wants to make sure he draws the cards and decides. It's a very expensive card. I don't usually play that card until later in the game, but maybe he's concerned that he won't be able to play it um, because the lakes are running dry, and it's really a, a pretty disappointing to play that card without the lakes. But not being able to take advantage of the animals as much as the, the plants is always a little bit disappointing. You know, Ideally, you'd rather take the four animals than the five plants, um, but you do what you got to do. And uh, that will indeed let him do the greenery thing um, that he's maybe hoping to set up there. This is going to be kind of sweet for Levi, though. I think Levi is going to be able to kind of control the oxygen, given that he is first player next turn. So he's probably going to get that free temperature bump as well, um, short of other people being able to pull some shenanigans along the way. Uh, we'll see what happens. But Levi bumps up the temperature with his heat there, just pushing those points as far as he possibly can. Looks like I scored two points, so maybe I played like a, that that dumb score two terraforming points event. Just didn't have a lot else to do. Um, here I go with a plantation for an oxygen um, and a greenery. I'm debating whether I play this next to Noctis City and get the green, or whether I play this somewhere else, thinking that uh, Levi maybe will do that in the future. And I play a little bit more defense here. Um, at first, and then I say, nah, I'll get the I'll get the plant rebate. That's what I should do. And then I think I'm gonna play another greenery here. Yeah, okay, I see. I've got and I got another oxygen with a mining expedition. 
um, which will give me the extra bump there. So I'm concerned that Levi is going to get it clearly on the table at the time. I see it go up to 6%. I take advantage of it to double strike. Um, this is probably not exactly the sequence I was looking at, but I had the cash for it actually almost exactly. So um, I'm going to actually assume that I was I was being a predator in this moment, actually was prepared for this. Nicholas is going to score a whole bunch of steel with a little event there. It's a nice little pickup from him. I think I'm nodding there because I think I passed him that card. I debated taking it myself, uh, but I think I don't have a lot of steel using cards in hand, if I remember correctly. And there was something else that I took that was significant. might have been actually the, the plantation. Looks like we got some energy production over on Yakupo's side for a pretty cheap little price here. It continues to build a proper combined. He's playing the most genuine game of terraforming Mars and that he is both terraforming Mars and building up his company infrastructure uh, that I think I've, I've seen <laughs> in a minute. We are going to see, oh, so I think this is Noctis Farming, which I think is what we saw Levi draw at the beginning of the game. So just a little, it's a it's a point, it's some extra money production, it's a couple plants, nothing terribly exciting, um, but just a reasonable value add proposition. He drew the card for free, so there's no reason he's not going to play it. Might as well play it on the earlier side, and because it's got that green thing, and now it's going to trigger all the tags on his decomposers and uh, protected animals or whatever that is. I am indicating something pretty enthusiastically here. Ah, I'm saying it looks like we moved the wrong person's victory points when I scored my points in the last round. And we are agreeing that that's the case. Good thing I caught that. This is a pretty significant four-point swing uh, between Jacopo and myself there. Uh, do my tardigrades. <coughs> Nicholas drawing off the top here and in full debate mode. Looks like he decides to keep it. Um, looks like Jacopo is on the debate here, which is pretty interesting. He has been pretty decisive up until this point in terms of what it is that he wants to do. So he's probably weighing a couple significant options here. Um, I mean, it looks like if I can see, it's, his coins are obviously kind of silvery, but it looks like he's got about 15 bucks, somewhere between 10 and 25, depending on which of those are silvers and which of those are, are coppers. That city that he placed out, uh, Cupola City, is already worth four points. Ah, and it looks like we got a corporate stronghold coming out from Jacopo here. So that's going to cost him some negative victory points, but it's a nice cheap city that he can get into play. He got the energy production earlier this turn, um, and he's going to be able to immediately drop that, get some money for it, and then um, convert that into mayor. So I think what he decided is that he doesn't want to risk not being the person who can claim the milestone next turn. Now, it's not really like anybody else is really threatening taking mayor from him, but I think he's concerned that essentially he's going to be done for the round. Levi, myself, or Nicholas could maybe do some shenanigans over the course of the next round. And then also we're going to go before him. Jacopo's last in turn order next round. And so he has to get that $4 rebate for the corporate stronghold um, from the lakes. I'm sure he would have rather played that corporate stronghold on top of the two greenery that Levi had, but he needed that cash in the moment and he didn't want to risk not getting the milestone for it, which I think makes a lot of sense. That's a that's a tough call, and I can see why Jacobo was debating that greatly. We see Levi's kelp farming here, and this just feels really bad at this point. Uh, you can see my, my super excited face. <laughs> I mean, it is also like midnight when we're playing this game, but yeah, it's just looking better and better for Levi as he leans further and further. He gets all of his triggers here, huge amount of production, um, and enough greenery to make sure he plays out another tile in this instance. 
Gonna play in that corner there, get himself some greens back, get a couple bucks. He's essentially done the whole lake greenery combo um, that you really hope to be doing uh, in this game. <laughs> Grabbing those territories nice and early, making it, taking advantage of it. Really regretting that sabotage right now. Looks like I pass. <clears throat> Nicholas is going to... His $3 investment into these biology guys is now up to, I think, 10 bucks as long as he has a card that he can use to play them for with. And did Jacopo pass? I imagine he must have. Yeah, there he goes. Uh, we see some... Is that a strip mine? Ooh, fascinating. Strip mine is a card that is funky. I mean, it's um, it gives a lot but costs a lot. I think playing it on turn five is not the most exciting of options. I would hope to play it on like turn three or four maybe. Maybe get the um, temperature bump boost, which of course he didn't have the opportunity to because I snaked it out really quickly. Um, But it's still, I think it's still early enough that he can get some decent value out of that strip mining at this stage going forward it depends on when he took it if he took it in a recent draft I, I don't think i support that decision but if he took it in an earlier draft in the game and kind of just decided he wanted to, to carry through i think i do stand by that decision so it's, it's a tough call it's a really close one uh, playing strip mining on turn five here so we're going to produce turn five and do some drafting i'll see you at the beginning of turn six all right and we get ourselves kicked off here um Levi dropping some plants to do some Noctis City things. And that oxygen is just about capped out. We're going to see temperature be the primary mitigator in this game since we're already at six lakes as well. Um, and no one's got a huge heat production engine, so, you know, it's going to be your asteroids and things like that. They're going to push that. Looks like I have an immigrant city here trying to take some advantage of, of the, the greenery that's in play. Is it an immigrant city? Or is it an urbanized area? Obviously, would prefer to have this maybe a little bit earlier, but uh, picking up two points for uh, a decent value there. I have some extra uh, energy production that I had from the beginning of the game from my prelude cards that I haven't quite used. And here I'm going to drop a convoy from Europa to make sure that I don't get blocked out of being able to use the uh, lakes before they get cleared out in the game. Pretty late pickup of two titanium here is a, is a nice get for me. And that just shows how much that the lakes have been part of the kind of internal system of getting a couple dollars, getting a couple plants um, throughout the course of the game here. <laughs> can't be too unhappy with uh this late stage europa turn six and and getting the two titanium discount on that this is maybe an urbanized area that urbanized area would go nicely up next to Jacopo's, getting two dollars and two greenery And obviously, I'm not unhappy to see that with my pets. Nobody's dropped a Rovers yet this game to get the $2 for all these cities that are being played. Um, but yeah, we're seeing that city rush out there uh, at this stage of the game now that there's greenery to be had and that territory starts becoming, you know, much tighter. And it's a very close tie between many of us uh, in that landlord competition, except for Levi, of course. Jacopo here is going to use his event to drop out a lake as we're going to see these lakes drop very, very quickly. Obviously, um, there's a little bit of a problem here and that, you know, all of us that want the game to go a little bit longer are feeling this crunch on wanting to make sure that the cards that we drafted earlier that we think are good cards, these kind of lake producing cards that, you know, are good ratios for victory points, relatively easy to play. Um, and we want to make sure that we're making use of them before they become useless cards. But that does mean that we're pushing closer and closer to the end of the game. Now, that being said, since heat is the real limitation here, it's not that big of a deal. Um, we are getting to the stage where it doesn't really matter who gets to the zero degrees Celsius. If there are no lakes left, uh, 
all heat is created equal. So we might start seeing things like our nuclear zones or Deimos downs uh, coming out earlier rather than later in those instances. Uh, similarly, there's kind of the rush on resources. So Jacobo here is going to grab that extra oxygen before it completely runs out. And this might be the very last uh, breath of fresh air. As we could see some early birds and predators in this game, that would be kind of an interesting situation. Um, certainly in early predators to eat all those, you know, protected animals. Uh, it's not protected animals. Whatever the name of that card is um, of Levi's would be really helpful because I, I do still think he's really crushing us at this point in time. I've been saying that, but, you know, admittedly in terraforming, he's only a few points ahead of uh, both Jacopo and myself. So not as terrible as it might feel. Here's a little bit of a late symbiote guy. Just kind of produced some extra victory points for his decomposers over there. Um, by the time the game ends, it'll maybe have produced one or two extra points. Uh, but it's not a very expensive card. So um, Levi's happy to to make that small little ratio exchange there. Here is my tardigrade play, followed by Nicholas drawing some cards. <clears throat> he makes the face he often does. That looks like an underground city there. Underground city can be hard to play because you don't have the energy, but Nicholas actually is kind of the king of energy. So um, he's deciding whether he can play this somewhere effective on the board, and he's going to decide to keep it, which I think makes sense. Makes a lot of steel and things like that, so I think he can play it out reasonably early grass not the most exciting card especially when uh, oxygen is kind of full up but it does give him enough greenery to grab the last bit of oxygen which suddenly makes the grass much more exciting um, i think he's going to place this probably down by his capital there yep in between his capital and his stronghold see some symbiote action and actually he's going to use that symbiote to support his regolith eaters oh the regolith eaters make temperature not oxygen so my comment from earlier is so dumb obviously that's a great play for him because he wants the game to be going and that I, it makes total sense earlier i was wondering how he moved up the temperature without spending the a heat and i kind of didn't debate it too much um duh okay so they make all the way back if you commented already on my video <laughs> i know <laughs> Uh, that's great stuff. <laughs> Nicholas triggering some more uh, little micro guys there, microorganisms. And Jacobo, pretty poor at this point. Oh, he's sitting on a stack of steel still, so I think he's deciding whether he wants to cash that in to play something out of his hand. He decides no. Looks like he's done for the round. Levi keeps making some more regolith, those little temperature eating guys. And it's it's pretty interesting, you know, between the players, you're seeing like who has essentially, um, you know, we're mostly taking one action at a time, whipping around the table, but every once in a while we'll go into take two actions mode when we really need to. Looks like we get some big play here from Nicholas. Is that IO Mining Industries? Two titanium production, some money production, and then point per Jovian. We know that goes well with this Ganymede colony, but we haven't seen much else in the way of Jovians. Um, obviously, this is sort of his uh, his end game, but it's a very, very expensive card. It plays on turn six. It's not going to be paying out that much. Um, I would say it was roughly at this stage in the game, that play of IO mining, which convinced me that uh, I think Nicholas is, is pretty out of it at this stage. I don't think that there's much of a way he's behind on points he's behind on awards he's behind on milestones um i don't think that there's really any way that he is going to end up catching up to us unless he manages to draw and play out the absolute jovian nuts which uh is not it's not he's not off to a promising start with that he wants his game to go on for as long as possible so he can draw into that you know um, but he doesn't have sort of the like really sick science infrastructure that you hope to see by turn six he doesn't have sort of the, the jovian setup that you hope to see um you know his his production is great but his financial production specifically money production is definitely on the weaker side 
Looks like I've passed for the round, having done very, very little. <laughs> um, ran off to the restroom. And that's a pass from Levi. Nicholas is the one to end our round here. He's counting up his money, seeing whether he actually can do anything. Can he play this underground city right now? I can't quite tell how much steel he does have. Um, if he could play it, there's there were before a bunch of two-point greenery spots. Now there's basically one. And looks like we'll get a little Robinson trigger here after uh, pitching a card, probably for a dollar. They catch me up, and looks like we're gonna go into production. So I'll see you around seven, where I get the lead. <laughs> All right, round seven. We are at the point where we're getting very close to the end of the game. We're basically just a handful of temperature bumps away. It is feasible that the game would end this turn, though I think unlikely with that number of temperature bunks and the number of players who probably don't want to see the game end. Um, but you'll see me pitch all four of my cards there. Probably we're just looking for victory points at this stage, right? Like there's there's if there's nothing else um, that scores points, you're you're not going to keep it if it doesn't help you essentially either rebate itself very quickly um, or uh, or do that. So production cards at this point, uh, they are only going to produce end of round seven. That's pretty much it. So, so we're largely going to be done drawing cards um, at this stage. Nonetheless, Jakobo will keep a couple. Two, maybe. And we'll see Levi keep one as well. All right, I'm going to lead off here with the last lake, an artificial lake, the lake card that I got wrong by the rules when I was when I was doing the uh, 2022 Terraforming Mars final because I forgot that it existed. So let's see, drop a lake somewhere in the world. Um, I would guess maybe at the bottom. Yep, because I get a lake and a titanium there, so it's like kind of like five dollars rebate. That's a nice two point get for me. Um, discounted by the uh, uh, Earth Catapult 2. That's a, that's a pretty good value. We're not mad at that. See some greeneries here from Robinson out in the west. And everybody's just going into full, you know, point conversion mode at this stage. The the two questions that you're asking yourself at the end of the game is, is this game going to last for longer? And how can I just max out the number of points that I have? You can see me warming up my hands there. <laughs> it's so cold in these rooms. Um, you know, Levi, if he had his druther, dr druthers, thank you, um, he would move up that nine, nine additional temperature that we need to end the game. But he really can't do that by himself. Um, even if he just had the nuts draw, he doesn't have enough resources to make that happen on his own. So he wants other people to help out, but likely that isn't going to happen. So the rest of us are ask, also asking ourselves that question, including Levi, of should we fund one of these awards? It's $14 for one of these um, points here. Because if you can guarantee that you're going to get the five points, it's the best bang for your buck you're, you're going to have. Um, but I think it's the case that most of us don't have a lot of control over those things, except for Nicholas. Nicholas, I think, could easily win Scientist. Nicholas could easily win uh, Miner. Um, Banker is probably on Jacopo's side, but he knows that it's really risky. I think that that, that would be something that he should consider funding, though. Um, but it, it is it is really dicey. There's just enough cards in the deck that someone can just abruptly get eight income that... Um, suddenly completely ruins your math of what you expect. Levi here is just going to drop some greenery before it becomes a problem. Continuing to surround Noctis City, as we said earlier, it seems very likely it has it. Now it's basically a foregone conclusion at this stage. $13. 
card grades. Let's see what we got to draw. We don't like that. Nakubo is going to sell a card for a dollar, maybe? You'll see this happen. Uh, maybe he's just pulling out the card that he's going to play. But you'll see this happen at the end of the game where people have cards that they realize they aren't going to play um, or that they drew into that are just not very good for the circumstances uh, that they will uh, start paying paying cards to get a dollar but also to buy time so they can see what it is that their opponents are doing so they can know how much time there is left in the game. He actually isn't going to efficiently buy time here by discarding several cards. He just wants the money that he knows that he needs right now by discarding two at once. Um, Nicholas right before that played one of the Mars conferences, I think, uh, is what it is. So it's a it's a point. Does something with uh, science taggy things. Um, again, would be more exciting a little bit earlier in the game for him. I think Nick's card draw did not really work out in his favor. I think he probably put his fingers in a couple different pies and none of them really ended up panning out is my my sense of, of his game plan. Nicholas, I mean. Uh, Levi here is going to drop some lava volcano-y stuff so that we can uh, advance the timeline. That's that's all, only his, his, his real goal at this point is just to end the game, continue scoring points. He is ahead. He knows he's ahead. Um, so just making sure the game doesn't go longer so that he uh, has that that arc that he's angling for and score two points right here. <laughs> and that gives him enough plants, I think. Might as well spend them before someone takes them. News around Noctis here. That lava, you know, that volcano also allowed him to play next to Noctis there because he actually was unable to actually play in that location. And I'm maybe a little bit regretting where I placed my greenery earlier um, because I think probably Levi would continue to surround Noctis City and I might have been able to grab an extra point off of him. So something to, to keep noted for the future. I probably could have played that a little bit more greedily. Here's a sell for me for a dollar. I want to see what's going on. Mm, didn't quite care. Oh, uh, this is a uh, medical lab or something like that. It's just victory points based on the number. You know, you need some science tags to play it. It's a little bit of money production, but it's mostly just victory points. So just playing out those cards that are worth points at this stage. And at least it rebates itself a tiny bit of money if we go on to the next round. Pretty common second to last round of the game kind of play. Um, obviously Nicholas wants the game to go on for longer as well. I think it's quite likely that we're not ending this round. It's, it's, it's too bad for everybody that is in Levi for it to happen, as I've said before. <clears throat> I guess in theory it's actually even possible that the game goes for nine rounds if there's like a kind of full-on collusion um, amongst the rest of the table that we aren't going to end the game, which could, would be something for us to consider but it is a pretty tough compact to pull off because, um, you know, there's there's some range there. Uh, Levi's got a fair amount of power. It's going to be hard for the game not to end, I think, next round. CEO's favorite project there. And then we get a nitrogen-rich asteroid to get some greenery production and a couple TR points. Um, just a way to convert uh, the steel into points. And we'll go up on the heat. Three victory points. Can't be mad at him. Looks like we got some bushes here from Levi, which will trigger all of his little greenery pile, get him some more production. The fact that the greenery or the plants produce twice, uh, or sorry, what do I mean by that? that plants produce an extra time at the end of the game and can still be used. They're the only resource that gets to produce essentially on the last round and do anything of, of real value. Um, so plant production tends to be one of the only kinds of productions that's still valuable at the end of the game. I think I'm assessing whether I think Levi uh, or Nicholas have the chance to end the game at all this round, like whether it's going to keep going. Um, that's That's what I'm craning my neck out there 
you can see I have uh, my money looks scattered, but I actually think those those are bucketed into what I'm planning on spending them. You can see me doing math there. <laughs> And that's a sell for a dollar. And finally, these guys, bam, getting cash. Oh, no, they're not getting cashed in. They're getting turned into a bigger, bigger money piece. Yakubo here getting kind of low on money. Looks like he's got $7 there, but he does also have, I think, six steel. So. He could certainly play something else out still. Levi, I think, is still sitting on a fair amount of cash there. If I can look, if those look, if those look like golds to me, is it twenty one that he has? Very, very tough to tell. I have a ton of cash left, but I obviously am not interested in ending the game right now. On the terraforming track, and actually like points on cards, I'm probably in in pretty good shape. But you know, you just need to look at the board to see that Levi is sitting on five, six, seven, eight, nine additional points in greeneries, whereas the rest of us are sitting on like you know one to three points in greeneries. <laughs> and that basically, you know, and the landlord. So that's essentially the gap that we're talking about here is that greenery gap. That looks like a farming, so just more points for Levi. Yeah, he's managed to pick up basically all the green cards, which is just going to continue to to trigger them that also have points on them. So very, very nice gets for him. He basically, I think, ended up winning drafting this game, right? Like, he's, he's clearly managed to get uh, cards, and, you know, that's on both probably Yakubo and myself. I... Don't remember passing terribly much in the way of that, but, um, you know, it must have happened here and there. Um, there is an immigration shuttles for me because there's a fair amount of uh, it's, it's, the five money income is so-so. Is fair number of um, cities in play. That's probably a three, maybe four point play. Um, pretty expensive. It's not the most exciting point conversion ratio, but it's not terrible either. <laughs> Nicholas here is going to play Zeppelins, which is going to make it so that yeah, banker, you know, that's one of those cards that gives you a gazillion money income out of nowhere. So that banker is suddenly very contested between Nicholas and Jacopo. Um, you know, whether one of them is going to fund it or not is really the question. Levi here keeps bumping up the temp. And again, it's looking like with five temperature away, almost certainly next round is going to be the end. Um, it'd be pretty hard for that to not be the case. Uh, and it uh, looks like Levi at some point also played birds here, which is a pretty nice get. Just got a couple extra points, way to convert that high early oxygen um, into some points early in the game. And uh, are we doing production now? What am I doing? I think we are doing production, so I'll see you at the beginning of round eight. <laughs> and here we have it. Looks like Nicholas keeps one card. <clears throat> We're going to see a lot of zero and one keeps here, probably. That looked like a zero for Jacopo. Maybe a zero for Levi as well. I might have already discarded my cards. Did we just go that quickly? Yeah, you can see me. Organizing my money here. And Nicholas is going to kick off by drawing two cards off the top of the deck. Seeing if he wants to keep them. Actually, I think he's counting out his actions. I think I'm still debating whether I'm buying any cards. Yeah, it looks like I'm counting out the whole... The whole round here. <clears throat> the fact that I'm shifting the money and shifting the cards means that I'm not going to be able to play everything that I want to play. And I decided to keep nothing, which is probably <laughs> what all that math was telling us. All right, so I think Nicholas is looking around, debating if there's anything he has to do right now. 
you know, uh, an option is he can kind of just pray that the game doesn't end, right, um, and not push the heat. The other thing that he considers is whether he pushes the heat right now so that he can make sure that he gets some of the heat before other players do. And I think making the choice of not pushing the heat and hoping that we don't see anything big from the other players means that it is actually possible that Levi is not going to be able to end the game this round. Although, you know, I think he's got the regolith eaters. I think he's got an absolute pile of heat over there. He's got a lot of money, so he could probably just do it on his own. Jacopo, however, is going to just take that decision completely away and say, you know what, I'm going to drop a Demos down. I have this card in my hand. Let's go ahead and score those points and make sure that this game is going to be over. Um, but I want to make sure that I get the value out of this card that I drafted earlier, which is fair enough. And he gets to nuke a bunch of Levi's plants on the way. So um, a fairly reasonable exchange on his part. Um, that's a bummer for Nicholas, though, who just decided not to push the heat. That's pretty much going to be the end of the game for him. Um, and he probably won't even get to cash in on his heat here because uh, my guess is that Levi is going to soak up those points ASAP. A certain concern, though, is, you know, Thermalist is a an award that could be funded here. So some shenanigans or sort of like Cold Warness can happen over that. Yakubo is looking around and debating exactly that. I think he's trying to decide whether he's going to spend the 14 to fund an award, which is also something that I think Nicholas could have considered as his first action, whether he wanted to essentially ensure one of those awards was the case. But um, I don't think that there are many awards that the other players are interested in funding. And so I think Nicholas can buy his time with funding the awards this round. The problem is that he's also got a boatload of cards in his hand that he's just not going to be able to play, and he wants to fund those awards. So it's a pretty awkward situation for him to be in. All right, so we're going to see uh, a greenery play from Yakubo. Maybe down where the artificial lake is so he can get some money. Oh, he just said it's against it. I th he might be concerned about like getting hit by an asteroid, but I think he's like played like all the asteroids so far, essentially. Ah, I see. He's checking if he can contest Landlord at all or what second place in Landlord would look like. Um, in terms of like maybe where he should play out maybe he's deciding whether he wants to do like a standard project for another city grab one of those uh city spots that's on touching those two greeneries that uh are very very available Yeah, we're all frozen in anticipation right here. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Jacobo has caught up to Levi in terms of points thanks to that Demos down right now. They're about five up, four up on me. I'm about six up on Nicholas. Um, everybody's got one milestone except for Nicholas. That's another five kind of for each of us. Levi's got the landlord, so that's another... Um, five for him and then two for whoever ends up getting second place there which is looking tight right now because Jacopo's got one two three four five Nicholas has one two three and I've got one two three so it's four I've got four um so it's looking like it's gonna be a Jacopo thing but it does sort of depend on how it goes um with the rest of the actions um Jacobo also has, you know, an additional greenery that he's going to be playing out. So likely Levi and then Jacobo's second there. Um, and here we see it. It's a whole lot of cash. 25, maybe. He's concerned about losing the landlord. Wants to grab those two points for that city. 25 points, uh, 25 money for two, two victory points is not the best ratio, but it's not the worst either. Um... You know, it kind of depends on what else he has in his hand, but I think it's, he's just sort of saying, like, yeah, I want to push that. His pets continue to score points. Yeah. 
And we see a symbiote and this regolith to eat some regolith. <clears throat> and pass this on to me. My tardigrade gets its way to eight, to two points. Best tardigrade ever. And then I'm not in a rush to do anything. Clearly, I don't have a way to uh, make the temperature go up. So I just pass so I can kind of make all my decisions later. Nicholas decides not to actually put the eight heat into the thing. Looks like he maybe is thinking about that thermalist. Jacopo is going to go ahead and grab that territory down there that we discussed earlier. Um, looks like maybe the debated, the long debate of his, his turn ends up not being competitive with the other players, but obviously might matter um, as he sells out a card here and gets another dollar. Uh, he probably already knows exactly what he's playing, which is why he's doing that as a second action. Levi here is happy to spend down the eight heat, get the victory point. I do think that might have been an oversight on Nicholas's part, but um, we'll see if he is if he funds Thermalist. I, I can't quite tell how many Nicholas has on hand. So, you know, it's either it's one point to to get the heat or five points for Thermalist, right? If if a person can kind of guarantee that. So if Levi Levi would get Thermalist if Nicholas spent the eight heat, then Nicholas is actually quite wise in uh, essentially waiting and levi says you know what nicholas is not really my concern um i will let you fund a thermalist and i will just score the one point here yeah if you fund it i don't get second place that's a little bit of a bummer but one point versus two points is just making sure the game is over not having to worry about any of these kind of like shenanigans um is going to help a lot looks like i've got an advanced ecosystems there for a nice three-point card partner's coming home soon so good we're getting near the end of this video and there we see the thermalist so nick nicholas has indeed just been counting that and he played the game with chicken with levi levi said i'm happy to to do that with you uh, i think actually this might work out in my favor or Jacopo's favor the number of heat that we have one of us is going to get two points for that probably which is helpful looks like we got a food factory from Jacopo here <laughs> which i think is just a way for him to to convert uh steal into a victory point a little bit of food production or not not food production opposite of food production yeah it's just a way to convert steel into victory points at this stage basically levi's going to oh, make change <laughs> it's way less interesting way less interesting than i thought it was interesting that he's debating much i feel like he's got a sort of clear path to the end although i guess what he's debating is with his money whether he also does like a standard project for a city um you know grabs the sort of two greenery spot up north because he's going to keep out you know playing more greenery um between now and the end of the game he's got 10 greenery production so he's got two more greenery coming and instead he just does birds and says i'll pass the turn i get a dollar card that i'm not going to use and we see a very late anti-grav technology from Nicholas. He finally gets to his seven science tags. That's the three points. Uh, and we'll discount the other cards that he plays this turn. So a nice little get for him. Nice little end game uh, bonus. We'll see insects here to bump up Jacopo's uh, plant production by quite a lot. Um, although not to anything terribly exciting at this stage of the game. It's a 10. Looks like he's got one left. So it's basically like buying one greenery at this stage. He was asking the number of cards I have in my hand. Just an interesting, interesting ask. Oh, he he wants to know who's going to win the game of chicken. <laughs> so he'll 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 waste a turn for a dollar here, and that's probably what I'm going to do unless I've decided that I'm going to play the rest of the cards in my hand or haven't decided which cards I'm going to play uh, in the rest of my hand, which does sometimes happen. He's all set. I'm debating here, so I think if I had a card that I was easily discarding, it already happened. Here I go with Breathing Filter. This is probably one of my favorite cards in the game. I don't know why. I just end up playing this all the time. Two points. Decent little cash to points ratio. Nicholas is going to do something very similar here with a random card draw and a point. 
both of us discounted him by the superior anti-grav technology and research station at this stage, whereas I just have the Earth Catapult. And Jacopo looks like he is done for the game. I think at this stage, it's a pretty foregone conclusion that Jacopo has lost to Levi. The question is sort of like, does he, um, does he end up in second? Levi drops the city down in the bottom, which I was really surprised to see. I think it means that he really needed the $2 back uh, because this is only one victory point rather than two victory points for placing it up north instead. He'll also maybe get the opportunity to draw a card if he plays next to it, which is interesting. Here's my investment loan for 10 bucks. And looks like this is a rad chem factory for a couple more points for Nicholas. Yakubo's done, so we're going to just whip around playing out point scoring cards until the game is over, basically. <clears throat> Levi here with $11. Oh, $11 for an energy because he needs money to play his Noctis City. <laughs> Not the most efficient Noctis City, but here we have it. The other $18. And officially, had I waited for Sabotage until the end of the game, may have been superior to do that. Maybe I could have just surprised Levi and cost him five points. So, duly noted for the future, even though Sabotage is more effective early, maybe I'll just save it until the end of the game anyway. Obviously, ended up being wrong to hit Jacopo anyway. So, multiple errors on that. God, I hate those cards. All right, we're on to me, so I'm doing exciting math here. Looks like I'm taking a lot of money back, or no, I'm just taking change. I'm doing the Levi thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. taking change is great. And now I'm sitting here counting out actions. Levi's basically going to be done at this stage. I mean, he's going to play out some greeneries, but um, he's not going to be playing out any more cards, any more infrastructure. Nicholas is, but, um, I mean, he's got a lot of titanium, so it depends on the cards that, that he has in his hand, what he can do with them. Pretty interesting. You know, you look at my board, I have a very, very flabby infrastructure. Um, Nicholas obviously has a great infrastructure. Jacopo has uh, an infrastructure. He cannibalized piece of infrastructure, right? He like he made his energy, consumed his energy very efficiently. Um, so he basically has steel and plants and money. So it's kind of like the core of the game. We see that Levi's got some heat, but mostly plants, which is really his focus. And then also a fair amount of... Uh, money income um, but yeah of all the players mine is certainly the weakest economy by a fair margin looks like none of us are really debating the $20 for another award um, you know Nicholas could be dropping twenty dollars i think for a minor uh that would be pretty valid although actually yakubo no i think yakubo has too many steel for him to be able to get minor which now that we're in this situation i'm realizing that yakubo playing that city may have been a mistake on his part if he had actually funded minor instead but he might have been concerned that nicholas was just going to kind of contest him around that looks like i got a farming or something like that uh for a couple points couple plant production that gives me four five six plants after producing which is not quite enough so hopefully i've got a plan to get two more plants somewhere otherwise that really is just a card for two points and nicholas sells for a dollar levi's going to drop greenery he's going to draw that card like we said. I 
He just immediately sells it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not what I needed. Unsurprising. I think the extremely few things he could have drawn off the top of the deck there. It would have been interesting. Yeah, here I am still trying to figure out what I can and can't afford before the end of the game. I want to say I'm holding Mangrove, which is like a two-point play, but... It's not adjacent to any cities that I have. Um, oh, I was right. It is a mangrove. $10 for two points. I'll throw it up top, get some steel. So clearly I've got a steel plan. And then I think, I actually think it, and really what I should have done at this point was, um, used whatever I was using that steel for because in the unlikely case that Nicholas had like raiders or something and hit me with it, that would really kind of suck. Um, here, a, a great media archives is going to give Nicholas a cash infusion. Pretty sweet for him. That'll allow him to fund the scientist, I think. It's interesting that we do still see Nicholas with the uh, that steel city, the underground city from earlier. Here I go with another sell for a buck. I realize that I can't afford everything that I had. I think I really prioritized keeping cards that I knew were worth, you know, pretty efficient money to point ratios at the end. We see Nick's Ganymede Colony here. Um, no, I don't think it, I think he's only got like two Jovian tags, so it's one of the less exciting Ganymede colonies that you'll ever see. Um, I don't think I'm unhappy to see that with a extra pet that it should give me. I don't know what kinds of pets want to live on Ganymede, but um, apparently, you know, people are are unwilling to go without their pets, so that's fair enough. And, ah, okay, here we got the plan answer. We've got greenhouses. Extra happy to see that Ganymede colony as we're going to get a whole pile of plants. Greenhouses is one of the best cards, I feel like. Looks like I picked up 11 plants from that, so 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, so playing that farming there allowed me to play out an additional greenery. So I'll, I'll play two greeneries in total thanks to the, the farming and the greenhouses. Nicholas will fund that scientist right there. And I'll start playing out greeneries, surround my cities up north. It's a nice spot that pairs with the two of them up there, just nice and efficient. Here's two back for me as I throw that one right there, hooray. And then we'll play out the rest. Yeah, we don't quite have enough right now, but we'll produce the extra two. Um, we actually have one spare to allow us to make this cow for an entire point. Woohoo. It's not the most exciting play. I wonder if I... I hope I drew that one randomly, because that's a kind of sketch keep if, I, <laughs> if, I, if it wasn't one of my random cards. And that looks like it was it for me. A couple extra dollars left at the end there. It looks a little awkward. If I remember correctly, I think there was like a couple different ways I could score one point and I couldn't play all of them. So I ended up like overselling cards essentially by the end. Um, and now we're just essentially counting it up as we, we go through the motions here. We'll, we'll produce uh, each of our pieces. Yeah, I mean, I've hit the same drum over the course of this game. So, you know, kind of looking back on it, like Nicholas's plan obviously was lots of infrastructure, lots of cards. He's got a whole pile of cards out there. He was going for some science, some Jovian, but nothing really came together in a powerful way. Jacobo did, like I said, kind of the most fundamental terraforming Mars. He's sort of like a hybrid of what he played onto the board. Um, you know, he gets the mayor uh, by being the first with three cities. He had kind of the steel, um, and he also made some plants later on uh, in order to just make sure he gets some points there. Levi just hit points early and fast as he could in the game. Um, quick pause for me.
All right, sorry about this. This uh, sorry about that. But Levi's plan obviously points early, very eco line thing. He had nice preludes to support that, and then just really was like honed in on that. And he drafted really nicely to support that, having the decomposers and the uh, oh, whatever the protected animals, the animal hunting grounds, <laughs> whatever that card is, uh, made it so that as he was playing those out, not only was he getting the points, but he was getting additional like fractional points along the way with them. So uh, his ground game was was good, but it didn't wasn't perfect. It didn't need to be perfect because he had the cards to back up what was going on there. Um, I went for a very uh, card focused strategy. You know, you see that I have a decent amount of forestry out there, and that really is just from cards doing all that work for me, um, doing this silly sort of inventrix gambit at the beginning um, of points. So we're gonna count it up, see how it goes here. Um, as we are counting out, what is Yakubo counting out right now? Greeneries, maybe? Yep. A couple points there. Oh, no, that was the landlord that we counted out. All right, so then we're going to do the awards. I think I get two points off the science award. Yeah. Yeah, with my breathing filters and things, the other guys didn't have anything about. It. And then thermalist. Looks like it was, oh, maybe Levi got it. <laughs> Excuse me. Here we go for our milestones. And we have right now Levi sitting at 49. I'm at 40. I can't see Yakubo because yellow is invisible. And uh, we got 37 for Nicholas. Looks like we're counting our greeneries now, which bumps me up to 44. Looks like we counted out yellow, which had another five there. Ah, there he was, 42, so up to 47. Levi's monster 10 or something like that. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Yeah, 77 green. <laughs> Shake my head right there. <laughs> it's pretty tough to come back from that. Blasting him up to 60. Just very, I think the winning score in 2022, which was a five player game, was like 63 or something like that. Obviously, it's going to be a higher scoring game and a four player is just more points to go around. And Nicholas will get himself up to 44 with that. Now we're going to start counting cities. My city is relatively efficient from 45 up to 52. Also, um, actually, everyone's cities are pretty efficient. That's what happens in a game where just greeneries are all around the place. I think we got 11 points maybe for, for Credit Corps for Yakupo over there. Something like that. Oh, more than that. 58-ish. And uh, Leva got 8, I think, for his. Yeah. Up to 68 there. And now we're counting cards. Always the most exciting part of the game. I highly advocate, by the way, doing the horse race. So what every player does in the horse race is pulls out all the cards in their deck that are worth points and then shuffles all of them. Obviously, this doesn't work for the cards with the icons on them, so you score those first. And then starting from the player who's in last place, you start flipping cards and scoring those points until that person's no longer in last place. And then the new person in last place starts flipping over their point scoring cards. And you keep doing this until everybody's flipped over all their cards to see what the winning score is. I think it's a much more exciting way to go through it. I love the horse race. Looks like Levi scored himself from 68 up to 77. So it was nine points in cards. Or no, that's not nine points in cards. That was nine points in his like special cards, like his birds and his decomposers and friends like that. Um, I didn't quite catch what mine was. I want to say it was like a bunch, though, because I was at 52 and I scored like nine. So tardigrades, two. I bet the pets were easily five. And then like the cow was one or something like that. So, yeah, eight or nine points for me. Looks like kind of a similar situation for Nicholas, but not so great for Jacopo in that regard. Um, his invisible token, I think, is at 57 or 8. or No, 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 it's at 63 right now, looks like. Um, and now we're counting out these points from here, and those are pretty nice for me. That's where you're going to see my points go up a bit. I had lots of 1s and 2s and 3s along the way here, plus this immigration shuttles, which is going to put me all the way up to 76. Um, 
Levi had scored an additional seven seven points for his for 84. Um, Jacopo looks like he is at 63 and Nicholas at 60, something like that. So Levi wins pretty comfortably. I mean, an eight point gap is is, is notable. Um, but I will say that I, I think I was quite pleasantly surprised to be in second place. And actually, you know, eight points is notable, but it's not awful. It's not a complete blowout. I was closer than I thought I was going to get with this kind of wild strategy. So I can't be too upset about that, um, but I can be upset about not getting there. And Levi can be pretty proud of the fact that he is the only double ring winner that exists uh, for WSBG and maybe for all WSBG history. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a great day. If you haven't already, please give me a like and subscribe.